Hello and welcome back. We have Hi. a fascinating uh, session coming up here on dynamic content. I'm really looking forward to this. So uh, Marnie and Julie, uh, welcome here. Uh, both of them are from Acquia. I'm curious on where you guys, when you do your introductions, I'm curious on where you guys physically are. Uh, we've been having sessions that are all over the world. So um, I'm just curious uh, where you guys physically are placed. Not what time zone you're in, because we're all. It's good, it could be good morning or good evening to you in some cases. Good afternoon. Yeah. So um, let me uh, ask you to introduce yourself there, Julie. Welcome. Sure. Thanks. Um, I'll start and then I'll hand off to Marnie. So um, I'm Julie McAvini. I'm senior product manager at Acquia um, on Campaign Studio, Campaign Factory, and CDP. I've been a product manager of Campaign Studio, Campaign Factory for about two years now. I'm looking forward to discussing dynamic content and to answering any questions that any of you may have. Um, and I'm based off of Boston. And um, I'm Marnie Baxter, work on the marketing operations team at Acquia, and I'm coming from headquarters. I'm in the Boston office at Acquia right now. Was that uh, Boston or Boston? <laughs> I say Boston. Boston. <laughs> yes. And what do you say, Julie? Boston. <laughs> Boston. All right. I can clearly tell that you guys are not from Boston then. <laughs> if, uh, for people that are listening around the world, uh, a, a Boston accent is a very notable accent with lots of O's, the long O's, like people who need to park their car in the garage <laughs> type of thing going on over there. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for being here. I'm going to let you guys go ahead. Uh, Marnie, I think you're going to share a screen and uh, begin your presentation and I'll just uh, lead you guys to it. Hey. All right, guys. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. Okay, good, good. So just coming in here. So got some introductions so far. Um, Marnie and uh, Julie McAvini, we're going to be presenting um, for part of the Acquia team. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and dive in. So we have our agenda up here today. Um, we're going to be coming very covering very aspects of dynamic content from use cases to product updates. Uh, at last year's Modicon, uh, I briefly mentioned how to use dynamic content for data-driven campaigns, and I received so many great questions about the specifics of using dynamic content in the email builder. So I figured why not take a deep dive into that feature, especially since it's something the product team has helped to make enhancements on over the past few quarters. Right. And on the product side, I've been hearing requests and feedback for dynamic content over the past year. We'll discuss and demo some of the new functionality in a few slides, but I want to briefly mention a few things here. Uh, we added dynamic content to custom objects. And as of late last year, users can now segment membership as a filter for dynamic content. Great. So we're going to start by defining dynamic content um, because there are a few definitions and a few areas that it is used and the area in the idea can get thrown around quite a bit in the world of digital marketing. Um, so to summarize at the highest level, it's the method used to display different content to different people. Campaign Studio's definition or what I'm going to refer to as an umbrella term is one of several methods used on the Campaign Studio platform to personalize the web experience. And there are many different areas in the product line where you can customize dynamic content. This includes emails and landing pages. Marnie will later demo tokens with dynamic, dynamic content. As a user, you can personalize using tokens such as contact fields, page links, asset links, forms, focus items, and so on. So I'll pass it on to Marnie to jump into discussing the email feature. Sure, great. Um, so I'm going to focus on is the email feature. Uh, this is where we're creating unique personalized content delivered to a recipient via email based on a record's characteristics or behavior. Uh, essentially, we're making the email experience customized and personalized based on the information we have about our audiences. Uh, so this is where we take personalization to the next level uh, in that we don't just display the personalization tokens of hi Marnie or hi Julie, we're personalizing the actual content that the person received. So based on my profile, I'm getting something completely different than Julie. For example, let's say because Julie works on the product team, she might get an internal company email from Acquia about product updates or upcoming events um, versus me where I would get various marketing updates. 
So in this example, Acquia is sending just one email, but powering the content someone received based on their department. Uh, so many different um, platforms and tools have ways to power dynamic content. Some tools have a uh, scripting language that requires someone with advanced coding skills to create email templates, um, or at least set them up so they can be cloned each time. Um, over the past few years, I will say, um, I've seen dynamic content on other platforms evolve quite a bit, and it can now exist as a no-code option. And that's exactly what the Modic platform um, had in mind when it was created for the email user. Uh, it's the draggable content feature, just like adding text or an image to your template. As long as you know what you want to appear dynamically, it's a very flexible and manageable feature to work with. Uh, and this truly, um, it brings together marketing operations and strategy, and it allows you, um, it allows your tools to do the work for you, essentially. Uh, that's why I labeled this particular session, Let Dynamic Content Do Your Heavy Lifting, because it's so important to consolidating the time spent to create an email. And instead, it allows you to focus on creating an experience for your recipient. And it takes the design and strategy a step further in allowing completely different design elements to come into place rather than just having personalization tokens populate. Um, we've listed a few top examples here on the benefits of incorporating this feature into an email program. It's the next level of email marketing where results increase and time spent decreases. So think of a welcome series of emails for a rewards program for a company like Dunkin' Donuts I'm an everyday user, so I'm going to use that one. <laughs> um, I might be signed up and exist in their rewards database, but I never linked my credit card. Therefore, I'm not really a retained customer because I never even finished setting up the, for the service. Whereas Julie might be all set up and she's using the service just fine. Uh, we would both get a welcome, welcome emails to introduce us to the program, but our messages would be completely different. Julie would get something different because I still have a step to take to complete my registration. Um, we can use just one email for both messages and allow dynamic content rules uh, to cut the amount of templates from two to one. So she may get something that says like, welcome, here's a bunch of locations versus me, where I'm getting something that says, finish setting up your profile. Um, however, there could be like 20 different versions um, in a welcome series, still just one email. Um, but also as an email marketing or email operations employee, if I had to execute an email program that wasn't set up to use dynamic content, I'd be rattled. Uh, my number one focus would be to consolidate. And this proves how dynamic content isn't just the expectation of the recipient, it's also becoming the expectation of the hands-on marketer. Um, the questions I often get about dynamic content and actually putting it into practice are where do we even start? Uh, and that is not an uncommon question at all. Uh, in a recent survey, we found that the biggest challenge facing enterprise level brands is improving customer experience. Thankfully, this is highest on their list of objectives, um, but it isn't surprising. Utilizing dynamic content is the perfect way to bridge the gap between customer experience being an objective that causes challenges. And the solution I always answer with is look at your data. I'm going to pause here for a moment because I feel this example that I found puts the idea of personal um, personalized experiences into a visual statement. Kevin and Sam on the left side are getting the same message. What we should be doing is giving a catered experience based on the information we've already collected. Uh, I'm constantly asking myself when I fill out a form online, uh, is this brand going to do anything with my information to give me a tailored experience? Or are they going to just keep that data and do some sort of statistical graph for their internal stakeholders, um, which it doesn't serve me, the customer. Um, if a record is giving you their data freely, do something with it. Um, here in the Nordstrom example on the right side, we can see that based on geographical location, there's a different email. A different message is being sent based on where someone is located. Nordstrom is looking at their data to create a message. So 
they've looked up weather, they know what's coming, and they're giving somebody that message based on that. Uh, so going back to our recent survey, we found that the top area of activity to grab data points is on website activity. Um, so if you are stuck looking for ways to utilize your content into something actionable in your communications, this is a perfect place to start. Uh, what is your audience doing? Uh, I also like to recommend making a wish list of possible company campaigns uh, that you'd uh, like to send. Once you start brainstorming and connecting uh, which fields can relate to which message, uh, then the steps can really fall into place a lot easier. As I mentioned in my presentation from last Modicon, um, Campaign Studio allows you to capture both profile and engagement data that can be used for dynamic content. Uh, Web page hits is already a field built natively into Campaign Studio. So this will allow a marketer to segment easily based on site engagement. Uh, so the past 12 months have brought a lot of really interesting changes and updates to the platform. Uh, to elaborate on a few things, I've highlighted what I, as a hands-on marketer, have been most excited about. Um, obviously, the email builder has made leaps and bounds. Oh, my God. <laughs> but also some other features like segment membership and show preview have made my job a lot easier. Um, I'm going to hand it over to Julie for some more info on those updates. Thanks, Barney. <clears throat> the first update that you'll see here uh, was something that was released late last year. We completely overhauled our email builder, and that's probably why you heard uh, Marnie said <laughs> say, oh mm -hmm. my gosh. Yes. And earlier this year, we also overhauled our landing page builder as well. Not only will users see a new UI interface, there's also improved functionality and greater customization. The second thing that we release is called segment membership as a filter. This particular feature is under the dynamic content block in our email builder. So you'll have the option of choosing various filters. You can choose to filter on location, title, or order, for example. Now you can filter based on segment membership to include or exclude one or more segments. This makes it a lot easier to send personalized content to existing segments. And the third thing here is show preview for content. So let's say you create an email with dynamic content and you want to see what your end user might see. This feature allows you to either send an email example to your inbox or to send a preview link to a coworker for review. You can also search and enter the name of a contact, contact for which you see to preview. So again, this is a great way to test your emails to ensure that tokens are correctly placed and that variants are sent to the right contacts. Awesome. So I'm going to dive into some use cases now, which I hope will show an even more in-depth example of how to execute this feature. Um, so let me get this going. Um, I'm going to take my example company of a ski retailer. I'm a big downhill skier, so this is where it's easy for me to just roll and be creative. <laughs> uh, let's pretend I'm a marketer for a ski gear company. Uh, an online retailer with some physical locations maybe. My job is to sell Alpine ski gear and I've listed some sub goals in here as well. Since no matter what I send out, we're, we'll learn something and we'll get stats in other places. So adding more website engagement and traffic and data points will naturally come with uh, an email promotion. So my plan is to create one email Yes, just one, and use geo-targeting to create personalized messages for my audience of recipients. I'm going to use buyer preference, which is a custom field. Um, I can use to turn engagement into a content dynamic content filter. So I'm going to take both profile and engagement data and work that into my email. The email will have four different versions in total, and depending on your geographical location um, and your buyer preference, you'll see something completely different. Not all East Coast people will see, um, will get the same one. Um, they'll get one of two. Likewise for the West Coast region. And more on that visually soon. Um, so to kick this off, I'm gonna start by defining my data. With the new product feature of adding segment membership, uh, I can get creative with my filters. I also recommend um, that if you need to create a dynamic filter of dynamic content variant that has several or statements, use that segment membership instead of a filter um, of adding all your or statements within the email builder. It makes building out the email a lot smoother, takes the load off of it. 
Um, so defining what you need first, I might be looking at engagement behavior of who shops uh, new items versus records who like to shop just sales items or coupons. Um, those will be my two kind of categories here. So those are the filters I can create with uh, segments or custom fields. All right. Um, when I get to the email builder, I can use all newly draggable features available in the new builder. I'll get more on depth in that in a demo um, soon. So here is the outcome of our email. As you can see, I put a West Coast and East Coast banner into the top of the template. And this is powered by geotargeting um, the field of region. I've also added in behavior field below where I have shop new items for next season. And that is different than shop sales items for next season. Um, but just one thing to note here, I could be getting that snow mass banner, but getting the sales items to shop. And likewise with the East Coast, like both of those sections are gonna be interchangeable depending on the recipient. Um, <clears throat> but you know, it's um, behavioral versus the records who shopped, but also geographical. So again, we're bringing in both profile and engagement um, behavior here to look at that and personalize the experience for that recipient. A uh, pro tip I've learned is to keep your design elements contained to specific blocks. So instead of trying to add in several buttons and text and images into one block of draggable dynamic content, I'm going to add one block per element. Uh, so an image gets its own block, a button gets its own block and so on. Um, dynamic content blocks allow you to access the source code, which is the only spot on these templates in the new builder um, where I can edit that hard code. I cannot access the code from the whole email, just the code per block, which is nice because it will remain rendered properly um, right with inside all those nested tables. So I'm going to show you what I mean um, in a demo here. Um, I want to be very transparent before I start and just say that dynamic content can be used without needing to open any code, and it's extremely useful and easy to manage without touching HTML code. But I did not label this uh, session as a beginner section because this is where I'm going to take the platform's tools to the next level. Um, what I'm going to be doing is dabbling a little bit in this HTML code. And it's nothing too advanced, but it does require you to know some sort of knowledge of email coding. So I'm gonna start by getting this email open and we're gonna go to the third row here, this section. And as you can see, we have the um, dynamic content uh, dragged in. And what I had done is I had used uh, dragged in a row and then I dragged in the dynamic content to those sections. So I'm gonna open one of these up. I'm gonna open up the image side right here, clicking the configure button. And if we look at the variant, this source code button right here, in a simple paragraph tag, um, we have just one image. You can see that right here. And on the default version, it's a different image as we can see. It's blown up a little, so it's a little fuzzy. Um, it's a completely different image right there. So that's how I'm setting that. And just adding a couple of other little design elements in here. So same on the text right here. If I open this up, this is the variant version. Um, you know, I'm looking at like a job title, CMO, the variant here, same thing with default. And so that can all be accessed right within opening up the code. And you can see there are various different like sizes and paddings and things going on in there. Um, it, it makes it a lot easier. It makes you be able to add these various different components. Um, but I do like to recommend that keep them contained, <laughs> um, just kind of focus on one different dynamic content feature per block. Um, so uh, something else though to notice is that a lot of these design elements are still controlled by the email builder, the no code um, builder with the design tool. So I have a lot of padding like already set in here and it makes it a lot, lot simpler. Um, I also want to point out this blue section down here. Um, so this is how we're bringing in now 
custom objects. Custom object information is going to be able to get in here. So you'll notice that the tokens that we have in here is what is set in this custom object. And I have those tokens coming in with um, the information populated from that. So I wanted to just point this out and show that these are two different things that are going to power a different experience per email. And I'm going to pull up the different emails that I have right now. So you can see this is two different recipients. And they're getting, one is get, I know I've not found is probably not the best example. <laughs> but you can see that this is what populated. And they both got the variant version. These two people got the default version. So you can see there are actually four different versions here. Um, all powered by that dynamic content and um, the personalization tokens. All right, so we're just going to come back in here. Final pro tip here is to use Campaign Builder to send out your emails. Uh, when I started to implement dynamic content and a one email template for newsletters and external requests, I was met with one challenge of making sure that each stakeholder still got their attribution. So think of my example of the West Coast and East Coast ski mountains. If one team owns West Coast promotions, how will they see what happened with their specific email reporting, with those specific banners and clicks? Uh, so using Campaign Builder to break out engagement makes that very simple. After an email is sent um, with a campaign, I can ask the campaign questions in the flow about links, clicks, form fills, or purchases, opens, and send that engagement data to various segments and custom fields for reporting. Um, I can also break out link tracking by adding different appended links to different sections of dynamic content. Uh, so I am going to open up the floor for um, you know questions and QA, um, but I am just going to go to one more slide here. Um, just to you know, encourage, if you haven't had your hands on um, Modic Campaign Studio uh, to get a sandbox and also to visit our blog. Um, we have a real, lot of really great information on there as well. Um, so big thank you um, to Julie and the product team and everyone for joining today. That was uh, wonderful. Thank you uh, very, very much there. Um, there's a couple of questions that have come up, uh, one of which is what uh, what custom fields will work with dynamic content? Any. <laughs> Any custom fields um, okay. are going to be able... Sorry, Julian. I mean, I yeah, you. I was going to say we can only see you. <laughs> Good. Um, sorry about that. Uh, just getting everything in order here. Everyone can see my shirt. Um, <laughs> so sorry, yes, yeah, so dynamic content, um, really any custom field you create, whether it's a native one that's already built into the system or a or, or one that you add yourself, um, all of them can be used in there. Um, so custom fields and segments are now both able to be used. All right, uh, a question from the audience. Robin had asked, what happens if uh, two or more if statements are true for dynamic web content, uh, which which one will be used? So if you're using two or statements to power the dynamic content, um, they'll both be recognized. So if I was to say, if my region is West Coast and my buyer preference is sales, I will get both of those. Um, Both of those rules are going to power like what banner I might see or what message I might see. Um, I don't know if I'm making the most sense of that, but it, you can add as many or statements. It's really like adding your or statements in the builder is going to create the next like segment or cohort, and that's going to put together um, the whole message. So whatever or statements you do put in, um, that's what the person will see. If you have various bit. Um, Variants, though, it's going to take the top variant. So if you have four, it's going to show, um, but I, let's say I meet the criteria for both four and one. I'll do four first, and four is the version I will get. 
And I know I didn't get into too much advanced segmentation there, um, but that um, that's how that will work. And I would be happy to connect with anybody <laughs> to show you how that piece of it works if needed. So, you know, you said you didn't get into advanced segmentation. So how, how do you go about applying segments to dynamic content? Um, in the segment section, um, so uh, on the left-hand side of the screen, um, if everyone was able to see on the demo, uh, we do have segments. And in there, you can do um, you know, all sorts of and and or, st or st statements uh, to get the proper segmentation that you need. I really recommend doing it within segments versus adding so many or statements to the code of the email itself. If it's just looking at that one segment membership, the lift is a lot easier. It like really takes down on the like um, everything that's powering the email. So that's what I, I recommend doing. All right. Uh, Joey had a, um, a, a question that has multiple parts to it. Um, in in Mautic, you can segment based on site engagement, but you can't filter dynamic content based on segments or tags. Uh, so, so the only way of doing that would be to use a campaign step saying show dynamic content. But once that campaign step is completed, the dynamic content won't show anymore. Uh, is that different in Campaign Studio versus Mautic? It shouldn't be. And you can use segments in your to power dynamic content within emails. You can't use tags, but you could do a segment that says including this tag or excluding this tag. And that is going to that can power the email. Um, so you don't need you don't need a campaign automation step to be able to do that. Okay. So how how do you use dynamic content on the website then also? So dynamic content on the web, kind of the same thing. You're going to create what you want to create. You're going to define the rules. Um, so it's a little bit like the email builder. You're going to you know decide what do I want to show as the variant um, and whatever the default is going to be. You're going to just define those two things. And then same thing with the fields. You're going to be able to do um, put that in. And then what happens is it's going to produce a token just like it would produce a token for um, like form. So uh, if you're familiar with how forms are added to what um, landing pages or any personalization token, it's going to be like contact field, first name, uh, form ID 48. This is going to be dynamic content equals four or 24 or whatever that specific ID is for the dynamic content that you create. And you can add that right into the code of um, any page that's, you know, connected um, to the tool. Okay, I'm going to take it away from the technical side for just a moment here. And, uh, you know, one of the keys with uh, segments and, and thus with dynamic content is knowing your audience. Uh, that's the beauty of segment setup here. Um, are there any best practices that you can recommend uh, for us or for working with our clients for generating personas or avatars before setting up their segments? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, again, it obviously very much depends on your business and what you want to look at <laughs> um, for things like that. But, you know, B2B, I can, I can obviously talk about, that's what, that's what we're doing here at Acquia. Um, you know, what industry does somebody working in and job level, I also feel is going to be a very important one. Um, I know that, you know, sometimes at various different companies, you know, you want to talk to CMO or you want to talk to like the director of sales or something like that. But that doesn't always mean that maybe, you know, the marketing specialist isn't the one really championing championing a tool and making that decision. Um, but having that breakout is obviously going to be really important. Um, but likewise, I think that region is so such a great field to have because not only are there a lot of laws in place <laughs> about understanding email rules across different countries and regions, um, there's also time zones. So like, I don't want to send an email to Australia at 3 a.m. their time, <laughs> you know, so that's also one that I think is a really great thing to put in place. Um, but, you know, in working with, you know, your different marketing strategists and sales and things like that, anybody that's part of analytics um, is probably going to be able to tell you, you know, these, this is what we're looking for. And whether you start asking for it on a form or using different enrichment tools, um, anything, is gonna, you can make a custom field for and 
that is something you can segment on. Okay. Um, any thoughts on how to test this? Best mechanisms for testing these emails? Yes. Yeah, so Julie was um, talking about uh, the show preview option. Um, I can look individually now at different people. Um, before, I would have had to do like a live test send to like a seed list. <laughs> and I'm sure everybody saw I had like Marnie A, Marnie B, <laughs> Marnie F. Um, now I can just pull somebody from the segment that I know I want to look at. Um, but Julie, I'll let you um, comment on that one, that piece of it as well, since you've been closer to the product development. Sure. So that's something that we release uh, fairly recently. So essentially within the product line, there's a field where you can enter in a contact name. So you start entering the name, the name will pop up, you click on it. And then based off of that, you can either, again, send a preview link or you can um, send that email to yourself as a, a test email. And you can preview what, whoever uh, that person sees. So if, if you want to put in Julie McAveen, for example, you want to see what I want to see, what I would see, um, you'll see every everything filled in for in terms of dynamic content specifically for me or vice versa for for marnie if you put in marnie's name then you'll see all the information filled in for marnie for dynamic, dynamic content so again it's a feel within campaign studio um where you can preview and you just put it in the, the name of the contact all right we're talking uh, a fair bit about campaign studio and then I'm curious about um, Mautic 3 uh, and Campaign Studio. Are there any features specifically in Campaign Studio that are not in Mautic 3 uh, that you might want to talk about or vice versa? With yeah, good question. Um, you know, what? One thing that I think is, so we were just comparing not dynamic context specifically, but the email builders, I think one thing that uh, folks have been really excited about, specifically with our email builder, is the release of um, Saved Rows. So I don't know, Marnie, if if you're if you use that quite frequently, but I know that's something that yes, that's fantastic. Really excited about. So, for example, can you touch on that, please? Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll just give a, a quick example. So, let's say you have a header or a footer, um, and in the footer, for example, you have an address. Um, you can save that particular row, so the footer, and then that will then save to a particular area where you can edit any footers that you have saved. And so with that particular footer, if you make any edits, that will then make those changes to any footers where it's saved in past emails. Um, the other neat thing about that, too, is that you can add that footer in future emails, so you don't have to recreate it over and over. So it serves really two big purposes. Excellent, excellent. Uh, Martin had asked a question. Uh, he had tried dynamic content in uh, earlier versions of Mautic, uh, version two of Mautic, and he couldn't get it to work. Uh, were there any kind of uh, major redesigns or minor redesigns in Mautic 3? And can you show the, the testing for, uh, well, we already covered that, the testing for specific recipients we already talked about, but were there redesigns that took place in Mautic 3 and Campaign Studio, as opposed to what he couldn't get working previously in Mautic 2? I'm not all that familiar with Mautic 3, unfortunately. Um, what I could do is find out more information and get back uh, to, to the team here uh, in terms of what those changes are. Okay. Um, Next question, how does dynamic content work for landing pages? Um, yeah, great, great question. So there is a dynamic content full feature um, that you'll probably notice right under the component section of the tool. And that is where you can create um, essentially the same thing that we just showed in the email. You are designing what you wanna design, whether that's just copy, whether that's an image, whatever you want it to be. and you're gonna define the variant, you're gonna set up your filters, and then what happens is it itself produces a token, and that token is what you're going to put onto a modic landing page. And that will appear um, based on, right, a repeated visitor's profile data, or engagement data, whatever field it's going to be, whatever field that you are using. Um, so I know that, um, before we were acquired by Acquia, one of the big examples that we were always excited and able to use was um, the blog sign up. So we asked, sign up for the blog if we knew that you hadn't. And if you had, it would be, check out the blog here. 
<laughs> so that was kind of like the default version. Um, but yeah, a very, very simple one, but it was quite effective. Okay. So we covered most of the questions from the group at large. Um, it's, I was going to ask myself, you know, dynamic content seems to be, you know, there's this learning curve with Mautic where it's a technical learning curve. It's, I guess, staging, staging. You get one thing going, you get another thing going, you get another thing going. And people seem to be saving dynamic content for it towards the end. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want to make a good case for people to move uh, move up their dynamic content and uh, and some of the outstanding reasons for doing that, why you want to cover that early on? Yes, it is a time saver. <laughs> At the end of the day, it is a time saver for you, the marketer, and it also is ensuring that you are delivering personalization to your audience. Um, whether that's something that your audience sees and it's like, ooh, great, they know I'm in Boston. They sent me a picture of like a boat or something or a lobster, I don't know. Um, <laughs> versus versus maybe it's just they want me to do something so i'm getting asked to complete filling out your profile um it's a personalized message and I mean, that's just that's just table stakes right now when you go to a site and you have a great experience it's usually because it's easy to work with and it's personalized and we're just expecting that now at the end of the day so i like I would really encourage, you know, starting with personalization in mind, dynamic content is a tool that's going to be able to get you there. All right. I like that. I like the way you say that there. Okay. Um, without, without giving up the names of any of your clients, can you give uh, one or two really outstanding examples that impressed you for people that were using uh, dynamic content? Things that you were like, oh, right, that's the way to do it. Um. Yeah, you know, I will say that I have seen um, emails being built and I've seen, you know, the code in the background where there are a lot of different um, personalization tokens in there, which is great. But what um, is, is makes it different and what where the dynamic content piece is really coming into place is that there's people that have... Um, various levels of, um, you know, rewards statuses. So like if I'm a preferred member at my bank, but Julie is a diamond, diamond preferred, you know, like whatever, I'm a basic preferred, she's diamond preferred. We're going to get different messages. But for instance, she's getting like a different logo that says you're diamond and I'm getting one that just says like preferred. And that is a great way to show that it's just one email being sent, but based on your level, you're getting a different icon. And that is a great way to personalize it. And I think that that's a really great way to um, easily add in something that doesn't make me have to build more than one email. It's just, and then all sorts of personalization tokens within there as well. But it's just a really great way. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people have different like levels and statuses that they might put their customers or prospects at. And, you know, it's, it's a really great way to be able to just, just differentiate, just make this experience, you know, kind of like brand yourself and brand um, within the experience that they're receiving. So that yeah, and I, I would say an example that I thought of as well is utilizing our custom objects feature within Campaign Studio. And being able to utilize that data um, and pulling that in. So example would be, um, you know, hello, Julie, I know you ordered um, XYZ. I know you ordered, let's say, um, a burger and fries, for example. Uh, so pulling that information in just in real time really personalizes it. All right, I love it. Uh, anything else that you guys would like to add to it as we wrap up here? Um, no, just um, want to thank everyone and really appreciate the questions. Um, I think it was a really good discussion point, so I really appreciate it. Um, and yeah, if you haven't gotten your hands on it, Modic Sandbox, um, you can. Yeah. Uh, yep, <laughs> you can <laughs> get out there and do it. Just do You'll it. You'll get all the. You can see all the benefits there, and you know, get in there and really get your hands on it and see how much you can stretch and pull it. 
Yeah, just want to thank everyone for attending. Thank you, David, as well. And Marnie, kudos to you for a great demo and for sharing your knowledge. Um, I know we all appreciate it. Of course. All right, well, thank you again. And uh, hope you guys have a, a great afternoon. I can say afternoon because you guys are on, out of Boston there. Yeah. So, <laughs> all right. Awesome. Well, thanks again. And thanks, um, yeah, we'll thank hopefully you. see you next year with another follow up to this. Absolutely. Mm -hmm.